Hello comrades and welcome back to Steve on Steve Plays China Mao's Legacy now. In the first episode we looked at the UI and the other elements and functionalities of the games that resemble other Kremlin Games games and how they work. And in this video we'll actually be diving into the gameplay of this wonderful game. So yes, let's not waste any time and get right on with it. Now I've been allowed to play the first year of this game so I won't waste any time. And we'll get on with it like in Nostalgie, there's a real... Um, like in Paradox Games, there's a real-time, uh, it's a real-time game essentially that you can pause and play at different speeds. And there we go, our first event happens. Five, no. Congratulations on your appointment to the post of Premier of the State Council of People's Republic of China, Comrade Hua Guofeng. As you know, your predecessor was Zhu Enlai, who gained popularity and respect amongst the people at home and abroad for his honesty and administrative talents. However, he was also an active promoter of economic reforms and promoted reforms in the party, such as his protégé Deng Xiaoping. For these reasons, the death of Zhu on January 8, 1976 caused great grief among the people, which dissatisfied Mao and the leadership of the CCP, who reacted very reservedly to his death. Under the decree of Mao, the campaign of Five No was launched, not to wear mourning bands, not to make wreaths, not to make memorials, not to hold memorial ceremonies and not to hang photos of Zhu Enlai, which so far has not caused anything except discontent. And you as the new Prime Minister can influence the execution of this campaign. So obviously this is our first decision that impacts or rather kind of gives you a hint of your direction in this campaign, which kind of political direction you want to go. So we can either let it, let it pass and let this Maoist uh, fight continue, follow the strict execution, follow... Um, or gently sabotage the campaign. Now, I'm gonna gently sabotage the campaign, so... As Prime Minister of the State Council, as well as the Minister of Public Security, you're able, as far as possible, to mitigate the effect of the campaign. As part of the campaign, government and police officers removed improvised memorials and tore down posters marking Zhu and Lai's achievements. Constant propaganda aimed at denigrating Zhu and bans on open commemoration of the deceased caused widespread discontent of people at the top of the party, especially his wife Zhang Jing. However, thanks to your efforts to sabotage the campaign, this content does not go beyond reasonable limits. Wonderful. So you see Mao, he's old. He's 83 years old, he's a bit senile, he's very ill. He's maybe not at the height of his senses, you know, he's not the great helmsman that he was 20 years ago. Maybe. I'm not trying to say anything, of course, against uh, the great chairman or his ability to lead. I'm just saying that maybe some of his decisions should be, you know, looked at a bit. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we've got a few. He's only got a few live uh, months left, so. Hmm. And straight away, her second event: criticize Deng and fight with right. So the death of Zhu Enlai. A lot of the early game events are around Zhu Enlai. Seriously affected the position of his protege Deng Xiaoping, who was left without the patronage of the former prime minister. He is now under constant attack by the radicals set up by Mao Zedong's wife Zhang Jing. I'm probably butchering that. And on February 2nd, Xiaoping was transferred to work in the fields of external relations. With the permission of Mao Zhang and her supporters, they managed to launch a campaign, criticize Deng, and fight with right, and begin an active persecution of Dan and the media. Dan? Okay. Maybe Deng? It is noteworthy that although Mao treats Xiaoping with disbelief, he's not yet participating in this persecution. And what should we do, given that Hua Guofeng has never been on good terms with either Zhang Jing or Xiaoping? Obviously, again, this is motivated by your political leanings, or rather where you want to take this campaign. So, let them fight each other basically, stand up for Xiaoping, or join Xiaoping's persecution. So obviously if you want to go market reforms, you support Xiaoping. If you want to go hard Leninist, you persecute him. So we will obviously do that. And the media controlled by Shang Xing's Jiang Xing's group, I think I'm pronouncing that kind of right, active persecution of Deng Xiaoping and his ideas began. The new Prime Minister, or the new Premier, Hua Guofeng also joined the persecution, saying that Deng's reforms ideas lead China to capitalist slavery. Like any action of Jiang Xing's group, this one did not arouse any sympathy among the people, where Xiaoping was respected for contacting popular Zhu Enlai and for participating in correcting the consequences of the Great Leap. Provincial party committees also joined the criticism of Xiaoping soon after Mao issued a directive on March the 3rd, confirming the legitimacy of the Cultural Revolution and noting that Deng Xiaoping is the internal problem of the country. Right, so let's look at politics a bit, and yes, Deng Xiaoping is still at the very bottom. There will be a lot of events that he'll try to push up the uh, ladders of power, but we gotta keep him in check. Um, now, in the first few months, these bars are gonna change a bit, there's gonna be a lot of calculations going on with depending on your decisions, 
So you just don't want to mess with that. Obviously, you don't have a lot of money at the beginning because, you know, life. Um, and yes, so far the game is not finished, obviously, they've they've been very clear on that. It's an early access, oh, it's not even an early access, I was just very lucky to get a key, and I'm very grateful for that. But yes, there's, just, there's not a lot of uh, diplomacy decisions, it's focused mainly on the internal affairs of China, at least for the first year of the game where Mao is still in charge, which obviously makes sense. So, our next event. Elections in Thailand, though, I don't really care about Thailand. After the fall of the Junta in 1973, uh, the victories of the communists, uh, maybe this is our chance, if not lure away, or at least to destabilize Indochina. Um, yeah, alright, let's do interfering. To hell with the elections, it is better to send the guerrillas than weapons. Ignoring the elections, we sent more weapons to the guerrillas. However, it does not seem that the CPT will be able to control a sufficient part of the country in this way. Oh well. We tried. Waste a lot of money, actually, on that. Not a lot, but some, and we're losing money right now, which isn't great. Let's see our economy. Uh, yeah, nothing is developing very quickly. And science, is that actually progressing at any rate? Yes, it is good. So you see at the bottom of the screen, there's the little blue number that shows that science is actually getting done, which is wonderful. So, another event. And again, Zhu and Lai, it's almost as though uh, it's breaking the four wall. On March 25th, 76, an article was published in the Shanghai newspaper. Okay. Wen Hui Bao, okay, that's... In which the late Zhu Enlai was counted among the capitalist rotors. Ooh, supporters of the capitalist path. The material appeared at the direction of the head of the Shanghai Party organization, Ch Zhang Chun Chao. Man, these names, I will never be able to pronounce them. Zhang Qing's closest associate. The article also sharply criticizes both Deng Xiaoping and his reform ideas. This article is actually for the first time publicly accusing Zhu of sympathizing with capitalism. And it is not known how the people will react to it. Dude, that's awesome. We will support the thesis of this article and distribute them. Although I'm pretty sure that this will cause discontent, so... Withdraw material and prohibit its publication is what I'm gonna do. Because of the enormous power as head of the administration, the article, despite our attempts to seize it, still leaked to the people. But your actions allowed to, to delay and impede the dissemination. It is precisely because of this that the scale of the protests of the people who took the article is an insult to the deceased, uh, is not as big as it could be. So yeah, if you pick the other options, there'll be massive riots, and that will, not riots, but massive protests, and that will decrease support of the people. Which obviously you don't want to decrease the support of the people, because, you know, they hold up your country. The soundtrack in this game is pretty sexy. Oh yeah, okay, so we're running to deficit already, so we'll just cut back science funding a bit, before our economy can actually kick off, before industry and agriculture develops. Alright, another event. Oh yes, the secret incident. This video cannot be seen in China anymore. So, the Tiananmen incident. Numerous attempts by the CCP to discredit the late Zhu Enlai have caused only discontent among the people. On April 7th, on the day of the traditional holiday of remembrance of the departed, the citizens of Beijing carried wreaths in memory of Zhu Enlai in the Tiananmen Square to the monument of the people's heroes. Before nightfall, about 2 million people visited the square, and the mountain of wreaths reached 20 meters in height. On this occasion, an emergency meeting of the Politburo of the CPC Central Committee was convened under the chairmanship of Mao Zedong, but it was decided to crush the demonstrations. You and the mayor of Beijing, Wu Dei, were appointed to be responsible for this. During the night, we managed to clear the area from the wreaths, but the people who came on the morning of April 5th demanded that they be returned. Ooh, okay. Interesting. At the same time, there are calls for the overthrow of Mao Zedong and Changjing and the demands of genuine Marxism-Leninism. Jiang Qing calls for a harsh suppression of protests, and Wu, Wu Dei seems to want to avoid violence, but the decision is ours. So, disperse protests with the help of the armed police, call to go away and disperse the remaining, or call them off to go away and cordon off until they leave. Ooh. Let's do the thing that we can't talk about, ever, on the internet. And yes, that's obviously terrible. In the evening, subunits of the city police and troops of the Peking garrison were brought into the square, which entered into a fight with the protesters. Because of the huge scope of the speeches, many soldiers and police and even more demonstrators were injured, several protesters were killed. In the end, the security forces managed to drive out the protesters. Over 2,000 people were arrested. Such a tough method of suppressing protests has displeased the people and the world community, but it seems the worst is over. The events in Tiananmen were officially declared a counter-revolutionary incident their responsibility for which was assigned to Deng Xiaoping. At the suggestion of Mao Zedong, the Politburo dismissed Deng Xiaoping from all posts, but, reti but retained his membership in the CCP. 
Ended up being himself at this time as in Guangzhou, under the protection of his old comrade in arms, commander of the Guangzhou Military District. I don't know how to pronounce that. Zhu? Xiu, maybe? Right, so basically, we made everybody hate Deng Xiaoping. There's massive protest at Tiananmen Square. Obviously, nobody's allowed to talk about that, which is a bit sad. But yes, that affected our, st our stats at the bottom. The party supports us more, the people don't support us a lot anymore. Liberalization was crushed, although, which is great, obviously. And, uh, yeah. This will probably be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. And to do that, you subscribe. And please leave a comment in the comment below if you want to see more of this kind of thing. Go and hop onto our Discord server for more of this goody good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.